Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Hello again, everybody. Uh, welcome to another duly noted podcast uh, presented by Titan MRI, as it always is. And, uh, of course, man, I tell you what, the Titan tent was great out there on Saturday. They had, well, I don't want to, they had some really good stuff. It was fun. Of course, we are coming to you from the Meldon Law Gator Studios here at Steve Spurrier's Podcast Grill. A shout out to Meldon Law. Also did ha- the breakfast along with Miapa out there at the tournament and, uh, just incredible. The they had signs everywhere. It, the, I tell you what, they know what they're doing marketing wise. Thanks to everybody. I'll get to that a little bit later. Uh, usually, Coach Spurrier is in here on Mondays, but he is accepting an award. I'm sure he's going to do another Hall of Fame. You know, my wife got into a Hall of Fame Friday night. I'm still zero Hall of Fames. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it's because I haven't done anything. It, that could be it. But uh, Coach Spurrier is actually getting an award, the Nick Saban Award, along with Eddie Robinson, the late Eddie Robinson. Um, and he's getting that award um, for the for being just being honored for being a great coach. I think that's what it is, basically. Um, so he's there, and he can't be here today. Uh, we're going to have uh, my good friend Heath Klein, who many of you know because we Heath and I did a show together for a while, and um, – uh, he's he was on radio for a long time around here. Went to school in Florida. Uh, now in Columbia, South Carolina, one hundred seven five. The game, and uh, but he knows the SEC now. I want to talk to him about South Carolina. I've got some good yes, no way, or maybe questions for him um, that we'll do at the end of that segment. So uh, the lead story today, and in fact, I've I've been thinking about this. I think we want to make a new segment that's going to be the top three or top four stories, and we'll, we'll get it that sponsored too, Evan. What do you think? Good? No good? You like it? Okay. All right. Well, here's the lead story in my mind. It's, and the lead story isn't what necessarily the, the national lead story is. It's what is the lead story in Gainesville, Florida? Now, and, and because I know a lot of you are listening from all over, but you know, you want to know what's happening in Gainesville. In fact, our winner of uh, the uh, Leonardo's um, – Quick Picks is from Pensacola. We apparently we're big in the Panhandle. We get a lot of people out there listen, listen or watch. Um, but anyway, to me, the lead story is Keontae Johnson saying or going into the transfer portal. Which look, we all knew he wasn't going to be playing here next year. We assumed he was going to try something uh, in uh, you know the, the next level. But I mean, I don't think Keontae being out two years is ready to be a NBA player. I don't. I don't think anybody was going to draft him, and he would. He. I figured he would either go to Europe or go to a G League, uh, but instead, he announces that he is in the transfer portal, and the first thing I thought was, oh, maybe Mike White will say, hey, Keontae, you know, we had a great relationship, um, but again, you have to look at all everything that's going on there with the sexual assault issue. Uh, again, nobody. I, I'm not going to even get into it because I don't. Nobody knows. I wasn't there. Don't know what happened. Whatever's going on there, but it's still certainly on his resume. Uh, what, where he could end up there? There's a lot of schools that will have no problem looking over that. And Georgia may be one, as bad as their basketball program has been. But the bottom line is, um, and again, I'm not blame. I'm not saying he did this. I'm not, I I, I want to make sure I'm careful about that. Uh, but the bottom line is he's got that going on, and he hasn't played in two years. So um, somebody will take a chance on him. There's no doubt about it. And some people obviously were saying, well, why not just play here? We, we loved you here. Nobody, you, Do you remember the, the great applause you got when you were um, introduced on senior day and you had that one great moment? Well, that's the point. He had that great moment. He had that great moment where he was allowed to – get the tip and and they took him out of the game and it was kind of a you know faux moment in a way but he had the great moment and the coach who recruited or uh, yeah recruited him and he was so close to and let him be an assistant coach as well isn't here anymore he's gone he's and I'm not saying he's going to go to Georgia I'm saying it makes a lot of sense that he would if he if that's where he wants to play. And again, that school also has to clear him. He has been cleared. 
here at Florida from what I've been told. And um, in fact, I kind of sat on this news for a little while that he was going to try to play more basketball because I, I get sources, but some sources you can't reveal. Um, so that to me is a lead story. And, and again, if he ends up in an SEC school and plays against Florida, people are really going to lose their minds. Um, and and you can't be, I mean, you can't be dumb about this. You can't. These kids have a life, and they want to do what they need to do. They need they they want to do what's best for them, and as we all do, as we all did, as we all do, do what's best for you and your family, and that's what he's doing. So, but if he, you know, if he comes in here with Arkansas or somebody, if he comes in here with Georgia, what a day that would be. That would be interesting. All right, so we had that going on, and then obviously the draft is the second biggest story, but I want to go right to Tim Walton, who won his 1,000 uh, – it's hard to say 1,000th. Th- try it. 1,000th. 1,000th. 1,000th uh, game. I still can't say it. Anyway, he's won one more game than 999. I'll tell you that. And uh, he did that, and it was – dynamic fashion, winning an extra innings uh, to get to that that thing. And I know that uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's uh, close to to uh, Tim Walton, and he has a really cool present plan for him if he got to it. And, again, that was huge for Florida to win that game. Uh, it really moves them up in, in terms of SEC. Uh, they're not going to win the SEC, but in terms of the SEC, in term, uh, I, I almost said in terms of three times the SEC tournament, which is being hosted in Gainesville. You want to be as high to see it, as high of a seed as possible. Uh, but it also, uh, Florida still wants to host, which I think they're, they're good on that for the regional because, again, they only have uh, these four kind of nothing games here at the end of the year, which is kind of – don't get me started on that whole thing, why the SEC does that. But And then they host the, the tournament here, and they, they need to do well, and they, can, they may be able to even – get as high as a, a super regional host. I don't know if they will or not. I mean, I think it's going to be tough for them to get to that point. So, But that game itself was huge in that regard because Florida had obviously the first game – I didn't see any of it, obviously, because I was busy. But um, they looked like a team that was, uh, from what I was told, was disinterested. And there's been some talk that this team is – had a little quit in them, especially when Han Adams went out. But instead, they rebound. And is that the way you say that that word? No, they rebound. They don't rebound, and um, they uh, and they win the next game, dominating fashion. And then win in extra innings. I, I I watched a lot of that game, and I was thrilled for them. Thrilled for them to win that game. Baseball. Meanwhile, takes two out of three, two, which they needed to do. We talked about this going in, that they needed it to get two out of three. Uh, But then when you win the first two, you want to sweep. And they didn't get it. They didn't play well in the last game. Um, So they don't get a sweep. Of course, they have uh, USF Tuesday night. And then they have to go to Mississippi State. It's going to be tough. I mean, Mississippi State's not great. Uh, But they're, they're... Here's the thing you have to understand about this baseball team. Because of their RPI, because of how good a schedule they've played, they are, um, they're still in the hunt for a regional, but I don't think they'll get one. But they're, they're still at least mathematically involved in it. And, you know, they're going to get in the tournament, you would hope. But um, they're also one game, one, one game out of, of being so low that they won't be able to get into the SEC tournament. Think about that. Because everybody it – is, it is really a mashed-up thing where everybody's almost got the same record, and it's going to be how they play down the stretch in these last three weekends. When uh, Florida's got Mississippi State, then they've got – I think it's A&M on the road, then they come home for South Carolina. I think that's the way. And plus there's a game with FSU in there as well. So, um, you know, the, the opportunity is there for Florida to do well uh, baseball-wise. We'll see how they do, you know. Uh, I thought they played well this weekend, no doubt about that. Um, I did want to get to the draft, though, about um, Florida having three players drafted, and as bad as that was, okay, you go three players, that's it. I would go, you could have been worse. You could have been 
Oh, FSU, who had one player drafted. First round, of course, because he transferred over from Georgia where he couldn't get on the field, went to, to FSU, became a first-round pick. That's how good he was. And then won by Miami. And you think that's bad. How about Texas? Texas had as many as um, – who made these 0.0? Was that um, Flounder or uh, D-Day? Somebody made a 0.0. Anyway, 0.0 is the uh, number of players. Texas got drafted. Um, the SEC dominant again. Georgia killing it. And, and here's the, the thing. When you have 15 players drafted and you had, what, six or five in the first round, that's only going to help your recruiting. People go, oh, look at all these players that got drafted. They're going to really struggle next year. They're not going to be the same kind of team. I'm like, no, because they they're draft they're signing the same kind of players right behind them, and they're just going to move up. Uh, Georgia's going to be a force to be reckoned with, and this only helps them. They had six percent of the entire draft drafted, but uh, were Georgia players. Um, the SEC, of course, dominant once again. No big surprise there, with sixty five players. It helps when you get fifteen there. Um, the Big Ten was second with forty eight. Pretty amazing to look at the numbers for the um, the uh, Big Twelve and the ACC. They were they were not good. Uh, and the Pac twelve, the Pac twelve had twenty five. The Big Twelve had twenty five, including Mister Irrelevant, the last pick in the draft, Brock Purdy. And the ACC had twenty one players. Think about that. Twenty one players. That's not saying a lot about your league. Um, in the SEC, meanwhile. LSU had 10 taken, and that makes you go, well, well why were they any better? And they just weren't. <laughs> they just they weren't well coached, I guess, you, is all, all you can say. And I, I to, for Al, LSU to have 10 and be crappy and uh, Alabama to have seven and be in the national title game, kind of interesting. Auburn had one player drafted. Notre Dame had two. Maybe that's why he got out of there. BYU won. Uh, Texas actually had fewer players drafted than Lenore Ryan and Wachita Baptist. Do you know where Wachita Baptist is? I think it's in Texas. But Wachita Baptist had one more, one player drafted. Texas had none. So Wachita Baptist and Lenore Ryan tied Miami for the number of draft picks and FSU. Yeah, well, OU. Uh, is it Arkansas? Arkadelphia. <laughs> they can't even get the name of the city right. We're trying to figure out where we live. It's Arkansas or Philadelphia. We don't know. One of, one of those. Arkadelphia. Arkadelphia. Um, so that's a little bit of draft uh, minutia there. Um, you know, there was. they've already done mock drafts for next year. And one of them I want to talk to uh, Heath about. One of them is uh, where... Uh, the, the, apparently next year is going to be another run on quarterbacks. Of course, this year was there wasn't a run on quarterbacks. There were not a lot of great quarterbacks to be taken. Next year is supposed to be a big run on quarterbacks. We'll see how that works out. How whether those guys play up to the level. You know, for example, I want to ask him about Spencer Rattler, and a lot of people love it. Well, Spencer Rattler was pretty good as a freshman. As a sophomore, he got beat out. Now he, then he got in the transfer portal. I don't know. With that, I don't know. I don't know. Guys like that. Um, you know. I saw this one draft. I'm I'm trying to find it here, where they had um, they had um, Bryce Young going later than Will Levis. Now Will Levis is a quarterback at Kentucky. I saw Will Levis play. I served with Will Levis. You sir are no Will Levis. No, that's a totally different story. Um, no, Will Levis is not an NFL quarterback in my mind. I may be wrong. Or I may just be crazy. Or I may just be that lunatic you're looking for. All right, so that's going to do it for uh, the opening. That's what we'll call it, the opening, yeah, the opening. And we'll, sponsored by, insert name here. I've decided to add that anyway. we got a lot of things to get to, but right now we're going to take a break. Come back with my friend Heath Klein from 107 The Game. We'll talk to him about Gator football, but also, um, you know, uh, can, uh, I want to. I want to get his take on so, uh, not only South Carolina but Clemson. Clemson seems to be forgotten right now. We'll do all that and more 
on another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering cash. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant. And you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com hello there everybody i'm pat Dula, of course from another duly noted podcast and this is a great adam brewer and he's just opened up a place here at a grip coat to go uh what would give you the idea to do this to have a to go place like this? uh we really like the fast concept you know being able to get the barbecue uh now we have this new online ordering so we before it was a call ahead carry out quick service, um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Code to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Melden Law, we won't back down. Okay, we are back here on another Duly Noted podcast, of course, presented by Titan MRI from the Melden Law Gator Studios. I want to... One one group I want to give uh, recognition to for the golf tournament on Saturday is Ravel because uh, I forgot to pull the tailgate that they were giving away. Uh, they're going to take care of that and everything, but uh, those people have been so great to us. Ravel, uh, of course, who does the tailgates for all the games, and uh, they have been unbelievable. In fact, they gave one away for the uh, USF game and one for the South Carolina game, so... I know that if our next guest, Heath Klein, from 107.5 The Game, uh, was going to come down here, he would have liked to have that tailgate package, uh, free t- you know, TV and coolers and chairs and everything. Heath, how are you, by the way? I'm good, man. Yeah, it sounds like a pretty sweet setup. Yeah, it is. They, what they do is really cool stuff. I mean, I've, I've experienced it many, many times, and we appreciate them. Uh, all right, so you are uh, – are you enjoying uh, – trying to get to now that we have to get through another summer to get to football season? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, put it this way, you know, after two years ago, right. <laughs> nothing will ever yeah. seem complicated right. again. I mean, we, we literally had to fill content for months and months with no idea if it was ever going to end. So after that, I lost my capacity to ever, uh, ever get grumpy about the idea that June or May might be a little leaner on content. But here's the other thing though, too, Pat, you know, for all the, all the hand wringing about, oh, it's so bad what's going on with name, image, and likeness. Oh, it's so bad for the sport. If you think about the NFL, when the NFL took that quantum leap forward, 
was when they turned everything they do into a year-round enterprise. Like a week from now, they're going to release the schedule. And now that's like a big deal. It used to just be, eh, I don't know, let's put the schedule on Tuesday. Now it's like a full production. This is kind of the start of that with college football. Like nationally, people are paying right. attention to a wide receiver from Pitt who might transfer to the Trojans. You wouldn't hear anybody talking about that in May nationally before. So I'm not saying it's all perfect, but there's there's more juice than there usually is right now for college football all around the country. You're speaking, of course, of uh, Jordan Addison, right? Uh, who is mm-hmm. was at was he at Pitt? Yeah, Pitt, blood yeah, Pitt, Award yeah. winner, and, and looks he like he's the going. Blit- to the I should know this since I voted for him uh, in the Blitten <laughs> Award, but um, I, all of a sudden I had a blank there. But yeah, I mean, it's funny. Every day somebody comes out, bla- somebody different. Today it was. Um, former offensive lineman, played at Notre Dame, Aaron Taylor, yeah. Came, somebody comes out blasting NIL and, and how it's not fixed, and they go, we got to fix this, we got to fix this. And I'm like, I always say the same thing. How? How are you going to fix a problem that the adults caused in the first place by not doing the right thing? But you, you need a time machine. That's the whole problem. Yes, right. is that for years and years, they just they kept thinking, eh, we'll just we'll kind of just keep doing it the way we're doing it, you know. And and you think about the fact that that ruling came down from the Supreme Court, that 9-0 ruling. Remember, they didn't have to appeal to the Supreme Court. They had largely gotten a lot of what they wanted in that first ruling, but they didn't get everything. And so rather than say, well, you know what, getting about a 60 percent win is pretty good here. They said, no, 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 we got to get 100 percent. And they went up there and they got their head taken off. And you combine that with the useless empty suit that's finally being forced out of the job in Emmert, providing no leadership for more than a decade. And this is what you wind up with. I mean, seriously, just how how dense do you have to be in 2020 (laughs) America to think, you know, who's going to solve my problem? Congress. How stupid do you have to be to come up with that as your plan to solve anything? And that's what that dude had to offer for two point nine million a year. It's amazing. So, yeah, now now. Sure, of course setting some guardrails, having some actual structure might sound pretty good. You had your time. You could have done that, but you decided to just let everything go crazy. Well, and that's the thing with Emmer. I'm I'm so glad to see him get out, but I I don't know that the next guy can change it back. I mean, it's not like you can go, you know, be like Thanos and snap your fingers and some people go away. But yeah, I mean, it was, it's, uh, it's almost like, like, I don't think he's a stupid person, right? He can't be stupid and have that job. He can't be stupid and be a president. But it was just like he said, no, nah, they trust me, we'll be okay. They'll, they'll work it out. And that's what he kept telling the presidents. Because, as you know, he, the presidents are still the NCAA. They're the ones that are in charge. And, but it's, they listen to what the uh, director tells them, basically. And whatever he tells them, they kind of go along with. And that's where he You're- just let, let everybody down. You're, you're a Simpsons guy, right, Pat? Yeah, oh yeah. You know, you? There was an episode of The Simpsons where Homer Simpson, his, his kids try something, it doesn't work out, and Homer tells them the lesson is never try. And that's <laughs> Emmert. Emmert is Homer Simpson because early on he tried a couple of things. He tried to expand a little bit on the, the name, or not name of general likeness, but he tried to expand on cost of attendance, and he got shot yes, down. Yes, cost of attendance. And he yeah. took the big swing, big swing on Penn State and embarrassed himself, and, and that blew up in his face. And after that, the dude's only instinct for anything was, don't try. Stay out of press conferences as much as possible. Make yourself almost never available. Then even at the Final Four, he starts bringing other people up on the podium with him, so he doesn't even have to take the questions for the limited amount of time. Never try. Homer Simpson, your NCAA president for $2.9 million a year. Yeah. Uh, how'd that work out? Not good. And I think Homer might have done a better job, though, to be honest with you, because he would have had uh, he would have taken care of the media. I know that. Um, well, let's let's go talk about a uh, team you're uh, closely involved with, or at least cover, obviously, uh, and, and get a lot of calls about. And that's South Carolina. And obviously, there's uh, you know it went from we're wondering if uh, Beamer's in a little bit of trouble early in the year to everybody loves him. And, it's, and now everybody's freaking out with the transfer portal, what they were able to get, of course, quarterback and everything. And I, I would think that it, the optimism level is pretty high up there. Yeah, it's, it's huge. In fact, if anything, I think there might be a case that it's almost to their detriment. It's getting as high as it is 
not because it's not a good thing to be to be positive, but if you just look at it, like I saw somebody nationally had them in the top 25, they're not ready for that yet. Yeah. Uh, there's still plenty of concerns on this team that need to be addressed. They are a lot better than they were last year. They have better talent at key spots, but there's a difference between, oh, they're better and suddenly they're top 25. And if you look at their schedule, yeah, they should handle Georgia State fine in the opener, although Georgia State is actually you know, a better team than usual from that conference. But still, they should be fine for the opener. But then their next two games are on the road against Arkansas and Georgia at home. Well, it doesn't mm-hmm. take any giant leap of faith at all to imagine them not winning those two games. Suddenly, oh, one and two start. Ah, Gamecocks flop. Well, that's ridiculous. It's, it's going to be the total body of work, but it is set up the more hype they get before the season – for them to suddenly two, three weeks in start getting labeled as a disappointment, which I think would be completely unfair. But they're a lot better. I mean, th- this team was hard to watch last year, Pat. I, mean, I don't know how else to put it. Um, uh, well, they weren't four, hard to watch against Florida. Yeah. <laughs> sure, but the thing is, for their first 12 games, they didn't score an offensive point in the first half. I mean, that's really hard yeah. to do. Right. Like, you watch teams that are going to get clubbed, seal clubbed, 66-7 to seven, by somebody like Oklahoma – for homecoming, but they still get that one drive in the first half where you know, they take over at the 32 and can put it in the end zone or something. I mean, four out of 12, they didn't score on offense. I mean, that, that, that was hard to watch. And so now, I mean, just, just Rattler, the energy he provides, the, the additional talent that they've added at receiver, at tight end, it, it's, it's a totally different ball game this year. Yeah, I mean, I I think they'll be pretty good. I think uh, it's going to be interesting to see when they come down here to the swamp, certainly. Um, but you, when you look at this conference still, I think when everybody convenes in Atlanta in July, I think it's in Atlanta, right? SEC media. Yeah. Since I don't go, I don't really need to know where it is. All I need to Even do now is, we can't get you up there this year? Nah, maybe. I, it's a four-hour drive. I may think about it. Let's, let's put it that way. It's a Brazer plan. I, I, I will go up there. How about that? Uh, they're playing on Friday. They're not playing during the SEC, but they're playing the Angels on Friday. Okay. Well, that may be enough to get me up there. Um, uh, but, you know, I still – I can't imagine many people are going to vote for anybody other than Alabama and Georgia to win their divisions. No, no. I mean, that, that – that, I, I don't think anybody's buying Jimbo yet for all the hype on them. And obviously no. LSU is not ready. So, no, it, Bama, Georgia I, – I expect South Carolina to be in a 4-5 conversation with Florida. And, you know, we'll see who all Florida adds. You know as well as I do. You know, Napier's made no secret. They're going to keep trying to add talent. So – so we'll see where the stopping point is on Florida. But I think when we get to Atlanta, I, I would expect that there's still going to be a lot of love for Kentucky. Certainly Georgia's going to be at, at number one. And Tennessee, I think, because of all the hype on their offense, is going to be there with them. I think two, three is going to be Tennessee or Kentucky. And I think four or five conversations is going to be South Carolina and, and Florida in some order. And then you know, Missouri, Vandy are pretty much locks for six. Up. I mean, you you spent a lot of time in Gainesville, obviously. Um how many? How long were you here? Well, if we're talking just you know from when I started college, ninety one, and then um, was there. Oh, so you started uh, with Spurrier's first SEC. That's a pretty good way to start. Yeah, because I spent that one god awful year in Mercer in nineteen ninety, <laughs> which I still spent a lot of time in Gainesville in nineteen ninety, uh, trying to get out of Macon, Georgia. But uh, but yeah, transferred back down in ninety one, and then uh, was around for the first uh, the whole first run through ninety seven, and then. Went off and did some stuff with ESPN for a couple of well, about a year and a half, and I guess ninety eight. I got started up there again, and other than a couple of years over in uh, Jacksonville, I guess I was there until oh wait. So I know wow. you miss you miss being on the radio with me. I know that that's your. Yeah, that was hey man, that was good stuff. That was fun. We had a lot of good times back in. We the did day. have a lot of fun, but I mean, my point was, the, you know, college football in this area so well, and you've seen it, but it's amazing to think that. Florida, FSU, Miami, total five draft picks, and FSU and Miami only having one. I mean, I know Texas six, is embarrassing. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. It's absolutely nuts. You remember 2002 when, when Zook had spent the last year complaining mm-hmm. about there wasn't enough talent, the 2002 right. season, 2003 draft, Florida had, I believe, 10 kids drafted that year by themselves. The whole state of Florida had six kids. That's insane, including everybody. Normally, FAU, FIU, they're good for at least one or two right. each, too. I can't believe it's – what the heck's going on down there? Well, I think I think everybody's coming in cherry-picking the best players because 
everybody keeps changing coaches over. And this goes back to the thing I keep telling fans. Everybody wants to fire everybody, right? But if you keep firing people, you're never going to get stable and you're never going to be successful. It's not going to work. It's not a – the plan to win cannot be to change coaches every three years. No, no. Clearly it can't. And, yeah, you know, look, the Mullen thing was was kind of weird with how fast it happened, but – you know, pretty clearly there had been some, some dry rot that had been allowed to sink in. And <laughs> so, okay, you know, you look at what happened and, and how quickly they fell off and it, it drives home, if anything, how extraordinary guys like Pitts and, and Tony were that were just big time players that year for it to fall off as bad as it did. I'm still wondering about Damian Pierce. If you can explain that to me as to how that Can't, dude didn't, cannot well, please, please let me know. But, uh, you know, look, Dan, Dan obviously knows how to call offense. I, I didn't think he was going to be amazing as head coach there, but I would not have anticipated it would go like this. And so now, I mean, you've got to give Napier time. You don't have any choice. I mean, after right. after you bring him in and say, we're going to let him modernize everything, spend all the money in the world, have 50 assistants, have a, an assistant in charge of Gatorade flavors and optimizing <laughs> which one's going to look best on camera on social media when we dump the Gatorade bucket on him or whatever else they're doing. Once you commit to that, you got to let it play out. If not, I mean, that, that's the last card left to play. You know, Coach Spur usually is on our Monday show. He's getting an, an award today. But um, he, Boy, he how said, big a downgrade is this for you guys then? Not, not at all. You're great, Heath. But he was telling the story about how um, uh, he said, you know, Napier has four nutrition coaches. He goes, you know who the nutrition coach was when I was here? Me. I just <laughs> went around and said, get some green on your plates, guys. And that was a nutrition coach. Now they're feeding That's one reason South guys. Carolina. He had to tell the kids to lay off the Bojangles because they were all, you know, they had the Bojangles <laughs> right across the street from the stadium. That was one of his first things was, hey, dudes, lay off the Bojangles a little bit. Yeah, trying to get them healthy. All right, uh, before we let you go, Heath, and we appreciate you being on, uh, uh, and especially being on the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom lines, uh, we always uh, appreciate everybody who comes on our Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. We have to get to the Big Mills Cheesesteak Yes, no way, or maybe, and is brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteaks. Have I said Big Mills Cheesesteaks enough? They were unbelievable at the tournament. un freaking believable And that's all I have to say about that. I'm not going to talk about the tournament all day, okay? Um, but we're going to play Yes, No Way, or Maybe with Heath Klein. Here we go. Number one, South Carolina finishes second in the SEC East. We'll go maybe on that. It's not out of the question, but everything has to fall perfectly. The biggest thing is, you know, in addition to having to play Georgia every year, which obviously is an issue for everybody in the division, they've got yeah. A&M every year. And, and that that really makes it tough when you have that team included. It's, it's funny because they, for years, they had Arkansas. And just as it would have been really good to finally have Arkansas, they switched off and wound up with Texas A&M, right, as Texas A&M turned into a buzzsaw. So if everything fell perfectly – Maybe, but it, 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 I think it's going to be tough. Yeah, why did they make that change? Is it in anticipation of well, it, switching? Arkansas, wins? Missouri was they were trying to create a rivalry there with uh, Arkansas, Missouri because there was no there was no real juice with Arkansas and South Carolina. It was just when they came in at the same time. They came in at the same it. time. Yeah, yeah. So, That's how I know, would remember who their common opponent was when they came in. Uh, yeah. Because, so it was like, okay, well, Arkansas, Missouri might turn into a thing. And South Carolina, we got to put them with somebody. So you get the other new guys, you get Texas A&M. And, and so you, you just look at it on the schedule and you say, with those two, they're going to have to basically run the table, I would think. I don't think five and three gets it done. So you have to pretty much win the other six that aren't that. And that, that includes beating Tennessee. That includes a road game in Arkansas. I, I think they could have a winning record in the SEC, but I don't think six and two feels super likely. If you're if you're in Vegas and you got to put one – team down to finish second in the SEC East, who would it be? Probably Kentucky. Not because I, I love Kentucky, everything about them. I am curious about that new coordinator, but they've got a quarterback yeah. that I think can still get a lot better. I think that line, you can count on the idea the line's going to be pretty good. I know they lost a couple more guys like Kennard, but I still feel like the line should be pretty good. And Stoops just has shown this knack of, of being able to hang around and win games. Yeah. So uh, if I had to, that'd be where I'd go right now. All right, number two on yes, no way, or maybe uh, Clemson's step back is the beginning of a decline, not not an aberration. I'll say yes. And the reason I'll say yes is because 
when you make a mistake, when you stumble, when something goes wrong, you need to learn from that. You need to figure out why that happened. And, you know, sometimes it's easily explainable and you can just see how it's going to fix itself. And sometimes you, know, you have to address something. And, and Dabo Sweeney, for whatever reason, has just bunkered himself so much on the idea that the Clemson way, the Dabo way is the right way. And he's only going to hire from within for his program. So you promote a guy in Wes Goodwin. Look, Wes Goodwin might be the best defensive coordinator in the history of the game. Don't know. He might turn out to be incredible. But he has literally, before their bowl game, never coached in a game. Not never coached as a coordinator, never coached in a game. And now he is a defensive coordinator replacing a guy in Venables who is considered to be probably the best defensive coordinator the in best, the sport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that, for, for, from within, I mean, a guy like Robbie Colwell is a veteran guy. He retires. You're going to replace him with Thomas Austin, who played there. I like Thomas Austin. When, when I interviewed him in the past, it seems like a sharp guy. He may try to be a great coach. But, but again, I mean, you're, you're one of the elite programs, and you're choosing to go with rookies as your coaches because they know how you like to do things. And he refuses to get in the transfer portal for any reason. I mean, look, is it possible that Dabo is right and his culture and his people and only his people are better than everybody else in the sport? <laughs> I guess. But call me crazy. I'm going to lean on the guys that do feel like new ideas coming in from the outside help them and do feel like new players coming in from the outside help them. And, and I'm going to lean on them until Dabo proves to me that doing it this way is the right way. I, I think Dabo may be uh, cutting himself on the uh, succeeding Saban, the way, the way he has not been able to um, evolve. And, and so, okay, if Saban leaves, maybe we don't go look at Dabo anymore because – he hadn't evolved at all. Well, and let's be clear, too, by the way. I mean, Clemson was at an elite level. So, you know, we're not talking about, like, massive steps sure. back. We're not saying Clemson's going to crater. I don't think that's going to happen at all. But they've also benefited from the fact FSU imploded. Uh, Miami has never been able to get their act together. Well, all of a sudden, you look at what's going on. If Miami doesn't figure it out this time with the amount of resources no. they're committing to that program, then they're not going to. Uh, you look at what NC State's got coming back. I, you know, I, I don't know that I agree with Dave Doran in saying that he thinks that Devin Leary. Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Albert, Alberta, I understand you were witnesses to a crash. Can you tell us about the accident? When you're in a crash, it's important to get witness statements immediately after the accident. Whether you're in a car, truck, motorcycle, scooter, or even a golf cart accident, at Meldon Law, we won't back down. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant, and you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day, from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been 
been open for over 30 years, check out Ballyhoo Grill on Facebook or at BallyhooGrill.com. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. And this is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we, before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer? and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town. Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. I uh, want to thank everybody who had anything to do with the golf tournament. This is the last thing I'm going to say about the golf tournament. I mean, I, you guys are sick of it, I know. Uh, but it was just amazing, all the things that happened. We had a, actually had a, a repeat Wood Memorial winner in, um, in a, a Danny, I'm trying to, I, and I'm blanking on his last name because I screwed it up during the, the ceremony. Danny Horn. I said Danny Hood. There was a guy who played college, uh, I mean, high, high school uh, base football against named Danny Hood. Um, but anyway, we it was just a great time, and everybody did the incredible, how great Gainesville is, is just beyond me to donate all the stuff that they did. Uh, it really was a beautiful day. A few things I screwed up, but other than that, pretty good. All right, it is time for us to do the fun stuff that we always do on the show, and we'll start out with the Hesser and Kipke Power 5 and Bottom 3. Of course, they are. it is brought to you by Hesser and Kipke, a law firm based in Hale Plantation, specializing in employment, workers' comp, and family law. Visit their website at www.hklawfl.com or call Ken and Jennifer at 352 352- Three three nine 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 two zero. The Hesser and Kipke Power Five. Well, let's go to uh, number one. I'm going with the Mets. Uh, a lot of people will tell you the Yankees right now, but I, I'm going with the Mets because the Mets are nine and four in road games. I look at road games as being the real indicator as to how good teams are. Because if you can't win on the road, it's like the Marv Levy famous thing. He goes, he used to talk about how. You know why Hitler lost the war? He couldn't win on the road, <laughs> which now seems like an inappropriate comment. I don't know if it was or not, but it was kind of funny when he said it. But you got to win on the road. You know, you can win all your games at home, but you're going to eventually have to go on the road to win. So I, I look at that, and so I'm going with the Mets, who are 16 and 7. Then I'll go with the Yankees second. They've won nine straight, I know. They're playing really good. I hate it. 16 and 6. I'm still going with the Mets over them. Uh, number three, San Diego, another nine and four on the road team. Uh, that's big. Uh, although they're only fifteen and eight, but they're 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 getting it going, and that, we all knew that team was going to be good. Number four, the Dodgers, uh, fourteen and seven, as you know. Dodgers buy every player. Clayton Kershaw becomes the all-time league strikeout artist over the weekend. Then they pan to the dugout, and there's Freddie Freeman clapping for him. I'm like, ah. Drive me crazy. All right. And then number five, I am putting in the Minnesota Twins. Robbie Andrews, Minnesota Twins. Uh, 13 and 9. They've won 9 out of 10. So this may be my only chance all year to put the Twins in the Hesser and Kipke Power Five. The bottom three isn't hard to figure out. Uh, third from the bottom, I would put the Tigers, who are 7 and 14. When's the last time the Tigers were really good? They were good, then they were bad, then they were good, then they were they're not good. I guess when Denny McLean was pitching for him, maybe. 
Uh, secondly, second from the bottom are the Orioles, and the Orioles are saying, "Hey, we're not the worst team anymore. Woohoo! We don't have to be the worst team." They are eight and fourteen right now. Um, and but number one, there's no question who it is: the Cincinnati Redlegs. Uh, the Reds are off to a. They've never had an April like this. They are three and nineteen. Three and nineteen. Is that good? Um, it's the worst start in, in their history. And Jonathan India, the former Gator, is on the DL now. Uh, so they, they nothing is going right for them. Their run differential is minus 66. But the Reds, definitely the worst team. I, I don't know how that happened. I, was, I remember when the Braves opened the the season with them, and I was like, yeah, they got a pretty good lineup. You know? Man, I don't, things did not go well there. So that is our Hesser and Kipke Power 5 and Bottom 3. And we appreciate Hester and Kip Kip will, uh, of course, be back Saturday with their uh, the games of the weekend, which we'll get to. We we kind of screwed that up out at Ironwood the other day. But I screwed up a lot of things at Ironwood. Screwed up getting the, the Ravel um, drawing done. I screwed up. One, I, I lost a gift certificate. Yeah. Anyway, everybody else, every, all the players seem to have fun. That was sure. For sure. All right, let us get to the Leonardo's at Millhopper quick picks. And, of course, Kyle Cohen was out there, and he had, he had his t- whole team had uh, pizza shirts on. It was pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. And uh, appreciate him for everything he did for the tournament and all everything he does for us. Uh, we did pick a winner on Friday when we were out at the golf course. Uh, Chris Gulig, Gulig and I have uh, – Corresponded, so I'm going to get him his package. It's going to be really nice. Uh, he'll see how great it was. He is the guy, actually, just coincidentally, who said that he was using Yes, No, Where, maybe in school with some of the students. So that's cool. Um, happy to see him um, when he lives in Pensacola. I told you we're big in the Panhandle, Evan. We're big in the Panhandle. That's where you live. P E B. P E B. Panama City Beach, right? Mm-hmm. That's where he goes to get all his all his tattoos. Um, but uh, we'll be sending that tomorrow. My plan tomorrow is to send uh, his package to him, and also I want to send a Bob Dooley hat to uh, my good friend Steve Hummer, who what he sent us from Augusta really was a big game changer in the tournament. Uh, all right, that's the last time I'm going to mention it, okay? Um, okay, so... Our, uh, we'll, we'll get another contest started. We'll start with this. It's not hard. Florida at FSU on – wait, they can't be at FSU. They just played FSU. It must be here because they played at FSU. The, you know, it's Florida and FSU are playing here on Wednesday. No. Oh, it's softball. That's what it is. I screwed up. Softball, Florida at FSU. That is correct. Yeah, that's a per. That's why I did it because the last time they played like a ten inning game, so there's a reason to pick either team. That's what it is. Seven o'clock Wednesday. I wrote that down correctly. It's been a long week <laughs> dealing with this tournament and everything. It, it's been a long week. I'm, I am pretty tired. I will say that. So our Leonardo's at Millhopper uh, quick pick: Florida at FSU softball, seven o'clock Wednesday. So it gives you plenty of time to get in, and we'll start a brand new contest and get some more qualifiers. We had a lot of qualifiers last uh, for the last segment. We appreciate that. Uh, it is time for our Adams Ribco to go weekend Gators of the weekend. And I will say this: that the best thing I did Sunday after the tournament. Like, sorry, I said I wouldn't say anything about it. Um, was go to Adams' birthday party out at the lake. Melrose Bay, man, that was a lovely way to spend the day. I will tell you that. The Adams Rimco to go Gator of the weekend is Cheyenne Lindsay, and what a story that was on uh, Sunday when Florida really needed that win. I talked about it early, how important it was in, in terms of seating and everything and, and being able to go into these little non-con games here uh, before the SEC tournament with a higher seed. They needed that win, and Cheyenne Lindsey had struck out four straight times against this same pitcher. 
Is it strucking out or stri- struck out? Strick out. She struck out. She struck out. Against the same pitcher, she struck out four straight times. Fifth time, bomb. Right field, Gators win. So Cheyenne Lindsay uh, wins the uh, Adams Herb Code to go Gator of the weekend. I thought about making it to Tim Walton, getting to 1,000 wins. I congratulate him, but just a week. It's not your whole career. So I'm going to give it to Cheyenne Lindsay. Okay. So we need to get to uh, one of our favorite things, three things, which is always presented by Hand Law. We appreciate Hand Law for all they do for us. Uh, Hand Law uh, is a Florida law firm which helps clients with government. You can learn more about Hand Law by visiting its website at www.hand.law. The firm is available for consultation in Jacksonville. All right, so here are the three things presented by Hand Law. Number one, I don't know how many of you have seen some of the things on, and again, a lot of it's on Twitter and it's social media, about Kair Elam, and you kind of, the more you see about it, the more you are proud that this guy's a Gator and proud, even though the stats aren't overwhelming with him. Like he had one pick last year. Well, people didn't throw to him. And it's hard to get interceptions in press coverage sometimes. You, you'd rather slow a guy up, get him off his route, uh, don't let him uh, get open. I mean, I, that's the main thing you got to do. It's not as much about the interceptions, but – what it was amazing was when they showed his combine uh, interview, and he had this entire uh, Florida defensive playbook and all the notes he had made in it, and he and he was talking about here. I I wanted to get better. I was a, he was basically saying here's I'm not just saying I'm a student of the game. Here's the evidence. So he gets drafted. And he, in the first round, which I, I was a little surprised, but not really. I mean, I thought he could be a first-round draft pick. And he calls – he got drafted by Buffalo, right? I believe Buffalo. I, I'm kind of in a daze. Uh, but Buffalo, and he calls them when they finally uh, get done talking about everything. And he goes, hey, can you send me your playbook? I want it now. They send him the playbook. On the flight up there, he makes notes in the playbook and hands it to him when he gets there and goes – Here's some things I think, you know, that where I can help, where I can not, you know, these are not good things for me. Whatever he put in there. Whatever he put in there, I don't care. This guy's a great player. Um, you know, I'm thinking about doing this um, story on uh, for Gators Wire on players who left, and when they left, we all said, you did everything you could. And there's some obvious ones. Ike Hilliard would be one. Uh, Joachim Noah. I mean, that's it's a pretty good list there. Uh, but Kyrie Elam would be kind of in that limbo, that kind of netherworld. I don't, I don't know whether – like, because be, obviously when you're on a team, it stinks. And, you know, um, it's kind of hard to, uh, to know how much effort you were putting in. But when I saw all this stuff, I, I kind of changed my view on that. Anyway, number two, um, so was Florida only interviewing when they decided to hire Dan Mullen? Were they only interviewing coaches they thought might get show clauses? Because two of them so far did. Dan Mullen got one. Of course, it, I think it led to him being fired. And now Scott Frost has a show cause. A show cause means you can't go out and recruit off campus. It means you have to. You better not screw up in the next year or you're going to be out. You're going to lose your job. Uh, he got one, and here's, and here's the thing that he did – or did not stop from doing, they they hire a guy as an analyst. I think he was a special teams analyst, but he was coaching, coaching on the field, coaching at practice, coaching during games. That's, that's not allowed. Now, this, again, is another anal NCAA policy. Who cares? If you want to have 500 coaches, have 500 coaches. But the, these rules are in place basically because uh, smaller schools don't want to hire 20 coaches. They want to hire the maximum or the minimum. Well, the maximum you can hire, they want to hire those 10. And that's it. That's it. That's all we can, because we don't have the budget for it. You guys are dealing with that SEC and Big Ten money. But I'm, I, I know this happens at other places. Uh, I just sometimes nobody knows that it happens, but it does happen at other places where there are, 
In fact, there was a big – remember the, the, the big stink where Alabama had like 90 guys with headsets on during games. And I mean, like, that's, that's, not grad, that's not being an analyst. That's not being a volunteer assistant. And they finally made a rule where there's only – I think it's 20 can have it. I can't remember what the rule is. Anyway, uh, Scott Frost, so he gets in trouble, and that may be the beginning of the end for him. Who knows? Um, I don't even know if Nebraska is even relevant anymore. I really don't in football. Um, and finally, number three, I, I wanted to bring this up because we we like to sit here and talk about sports and talk about funny things and talk about making fun of people and everything. But sometimes you get reminded that life is about a lot more. And the, what happened on um, – a, a few weeks ago with uh, Lauren Burnett, who was a player at a uh, softball player for James Madison, James Madison, unprecedented run to the women's college world series, but she uh, was ruled as a suicide and the team canceled the rest of their games. They canceled. They had already canceled five. They canceled the last two. And it's just sad to think about. She was the colonial player of the year. I don't know what, why I don't know. I never can understand why, but I always want to, and I'm not trying to bring everybody down. I'm just telling you, man, there are more important things than who wins games. Don't always want everybody to be fired. Don't always want everybody to, you know, be better than they are because you demand it. Just be thankful that, uh, you know, take care of what's around you. Uh, so when you hear those kind of stories, it just it makes you sad. And I, again, I don't want to. So let me let me try to liven the mood by saying I'm not going to talk about the golf tournament ever again. There we go. How about that? Now everybody's happy. All right. We appreciate uh, Heath Klein for coming on the show. Sorry that we lost him there. There was a last, there was just a crash of a computer and all of a sudden we couldn't get him, but we appreciate him for being on the show. We'll be back Friday. Cole Kubelik is going to join us. I'm pretty sure about that. Um, we've had to kind of go back and forth with him. We'll, we'll, we're, I think he's going to join us on Friday, and then I think Dennis Dodd next Friday. So that'll be fun. And Coach Spurrier will be back, I think, on Monday. We'll see. I, I'm just starting to get back to a normal life again. Uh, thanks so much to Evan for doing the great job he does. As always, we'll be back with another show on Friday. Until then, I'm Pat Dooley saying I'm deep, I'm way back, and I am out of here.